Brothers and sisters, peace be with you. Praise the Lord, it's time to read the Bible again. We continue with Genesis chapter 33. Today we will study verse 18 to verse 20. Verse 18. After Jacob came from Padan Aram, he arrived safely at the city of Shechem in Canaan and camped within sight of the city. During the 20 years in Padan Aram, Jacob experienced God's faithfulness and God's continuous protection. During the wrestle with God at Peniel, Jacob got to know himself more. God changed Jacob's name there, from Jacob to Israel. After that, Jacob returned to the Promised Land. Dear brothers and sisters, if you were the first generation of Christians, you probably could relate more to Abraham's experience. Abraham was drawn to God's glory, and he answered God's calling to enter the land of Canaan. This was the beginning of Abraham's following God. If you were the second generation of Christians like Brother Wang, you would be touched by Jacob's experience. Jacob's experience tells the journey that every second generation Christian must go through as he or she grows up with church. Perhaps because it's only natural for the second generation Christians who grow up at church to know God's based on the knowledge of the Bible and its rich teachings. Therefore, the second generation Christians often do not undergo drastic changes upon receiving salvation by grace, and so God allows these Christians to grow up at church, to go to Padon Aram. In the U.S., for the children to grow up at church, they go to their Padon Aram when they enter college. On the one hand, growing up under the protection of family and church, these children seem to gain freedom when they leave home for college. On the other hand, this is the moment that they must learn to personally experience God and to follow God. During this process, God will allow them to meet Laban and to meet Rachel. This is the moment for these children to personally experience God's attributes that they have been studying in Sunday school. Eventually, God command them to go back to the promised land. The city of Shechem was the first destination upon entering the promised land for them as it was for Abraham. The Bible specifically tells us in verse 18 that Jacob arrived safely at the city of Shechem. How was the Jacob now different from the Jacob 20 years ago? He experienced God's protection personally. He met God face to face, and he was also renamed after the wrestle with God. God to Jacob was not a distant God anymore. He was a living God. God was not a God of Jacob's knowledge, but of Jacob's experience. God was the resource that provided for Jacob knowing that he could rely on God's almighty shoulder. Jacob came to the city of Shechem, and there he started to camp inside of the city. From this experience, Jacob knew clearly that everything he needed for his survival was from God, for he was blessed by God with a great fortune returning from Padon Aram. Once Jacob had built a place for himself and made shelters for his livestock at Sukkot, and when he came back to Canaan at Shechem, he knew that God was the mighty shoulder that he could depend on. Therefore, Jacob started living a life of tents like his grandfather Abraham and his father Isaac. Living a life of tents means that we are only strangers 
and pilgrims in the world. The better country for us is a heavenly one in the new Jerusalem. As I live my life on earth, I live a life of pilgrim. So instead of settling down at one place to grow my roots, I only live in tents. I am willing to follow God's calling and to lead to different places. Verse 19, for a hundred pieces of silver, he bought from the sons of Hamor, the father of Shechem, the plot of ground where he pitched his tent. Hamor might, might be a king of Shechem. The original meaning of Hamor is donkey. He was a Hephite. At the time, the king of Shechem had a son whom um, was also named Shechem. For the piece of 100 pieces of silver, Jacob bought a piece of land for building his tents from the father of Shechem. We will see the significance of this record. Abraham lived a life of a pilgrim. Through, throughout Abraham's life following God, he moved from one place to another, from Shechem to between Bethel and Ai, and later to Hebron. Until the death of his wife, Sarah, Abraham bought the first piece of land as a burial site for Sarah. From the Hephite Ephron, Abraham purchased the field and cave of Machpelah, as well as the trees within its border. The first piece of land that Abraham purchased later became a burial site for Abraham and his wife, Isaac and his wife, and Jacob and Leah. Abraham never bought any land for himself. The first land Abraham bought for 400 shekels of silver was used for a burial site, which allowed his descendants the right to inherit the land. Whereas for Jacob, after returning to Canaan, Shechem was the first destination for him. After he built tents in the city of Shechem, Jacob bought the land for 100 pieces of silver from the Shechem's father, who was probably the owner of the land at that time. Here we see a hint foreshadowing the development of Jacob's descendants several hundred years later. We will see later that Jacob took his sons and grandsons to Egypt to seek refuge from Joseph. The Israelites resided in Egypt later, became slave in Egypt until Moses led the Israelites out of Egypt into the wilderness. Under Joshua's lead, the Israelites crossed the Jordan River and entered the land that God once promised them. Joseph had died long before Joshua. Genesis chapter 50, verse 24 and verse 25 recorded Joseph's last words to his brothers and descendants. He said, I am about to die, but God will surely come to your aid and take you up out of this land to the land he promised on oath to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And Joseph made the sons of Israel swear an oath and say, God will surely come to your aid, and then you must carry my bones up from this place. Joseph died after that. The sons of Israel indeed kept Joseph's words. During Joshua's time, the sons of Israel once again returned to the promised land as recorded in Joshua chapter 24, verse 32. In Joseph's bones, 
which the Israelites had brought up from Egypt were buried at Shechem in the tract of land that Jacob bought for a hundred pieces of silver from the sons of Hamor, the father of Shechem. This became the inheritance of Joseph's descendants. From Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, we learn that they never purchased land for their own sakes, but for their descendants. Abraham paid an unusual high price of 400 shekels of silver for the cave of Machpelah. Jacob also paid a costly price of 100 pieces of silver for the land of Shechem. We know that silver symbolizes salvation and we know that 100 is a complete or perfect number. When Jacob returned to Canaan, he built tents for himself but paid a costly price for the land of Shechem as his son Joseph's burial site, a place for Joseph and his descendants to inherit. Dear brothers and sisters, do you see that the best inheritance for your descendants is your willingness to pay a price, not for the sake of a piece of land, but for the sake of your willingness to sacrifice. Dear brothers and sisters, we all love our children, therefore we all prepare for them. Some of us prepare a house, some of us prepare a car, whereas some of us give them the best education. However, what we see from the children of the wealthy families could be disappointing. They might not turn out as the buttress of our society. In fact, the best inheritance for our children is to show them that in order to follow the footsteps of God, we are willing to pay a full price. From the autobiographies of James Hudson Taylor, who was the founder of the China Inland Mission, and from the autobiographies of Jim, James Taylor's descendants, we see how the descendants follow their fa forefathers' first footsteps of paying a price of their whole life for the gospel for the Chinese. This indeed became the best inheritance for their family. As a result, God raised many faithful servants from their family members. The legacy that we leave our children is nothing materialistic and nothing philosophical, but how we are willing to follow God. How our willingness to pay a price to follow God. Living a life of tents is a living testimony of following God. Now up to this moment, we completed the first half. The second half is recorded in verse 20. There he, Jacob, set up an altar and called it El Eloi Israel. Building tents is to declare to the world that we are only strangers and pilgrims to this world and that my home is the heavenly country in eternity. After building tents, the declaration to the world, we then build altars. Building altars is for offering sacrifices to express our gratitude towards God. Jacob built an altar for God and named it El Eloi Israel. El means God and Eloi also means God. Putting these three words together, they'll mean God is the God of me, Israel. God is no longer a distant God of knowledge, but a living God of mine, of Israel. In fact, 
Jacob here responded to the prayer he said to God back in Genesis chapter 28. In Genesis chapter 28, after Jacob saw God in his dream for the first time in battle, he said a prayer to God as recorded in verse 21. So that I return safely to my father's house, then the Lord will be my God. Jacob built the altar in Shechem in response to God's answering to his prayers 20 years ago because God had indeed brought him back to the promised land safely. Therefore, Jacob built this altar at Shechem, his first stop in Canaan to declare and testify officially that God was the God of Israel. The prayer that Jacob said to God in Genesis chapter 28 continues in verse 22. And this stone that I have set up as a pillar will be God's house. And of all that you give me, I will give you a tent. This verse had not been fulfilled yet. Because in order to build the house of God, we first need to be at the right location. Jacob, at this time, only stopped at Shechem. He only experienced God as the almighty shoulder. Jacob must continue walking until he reached Bethel, which meant the house of God. There was a place for building the temple of God. When Abraham answered God's calling to enter the promised land, he moved from Shechem to Bethel to Hebron. Growing up in a spiritual family, Jacob must first go to Padan Aram to learn to experience and to follow God personally. When it's time, God brought Jacob back to the promised land to walk the same path as Abraham to move from Shechem to Bethel and to Hebron eventually. It seems at the first glance that Jacob had similar encounters as Abraham, but in fact, Jacob's experience got at a deeper level. From Jacob, we saw the process of sanctification. For God to sanctify us, we must endure God's molding, God's deprivation, God's discipline, God's guidance, and God's protection. Therefore, although Jacob walked through the same towns, he experienced God at a deeper level, at a more personal level. God's purpose was to develop Jacob into Israel, the Prince of God. We Christians must undergo this transformation from Jacob to Israel. Let us pray together. Dear Lord, thank you for the mercy you have already given me. Thank you for allowing me to see your grace and thank you for accepting me, accepting you as the Savior of my life. May you continue to mold me. I am willing to let you take charge of my life, just like how you molded Jacob in the lifelong sanctification process. May you lead me and transform me to weave the immaculate characters of Christ in me. May you help me be a living testimony for you. In Jesus' name we pray.